Well, it's very interesting. When I started almost 30 years ago at this point, it was very, very commonplace for us to have um, fish kills every other week and people would dump on purpose. And they were really very, very cavalier about their environmental stewardship. And that has changed a good bit. Um, people now are very cognizant that environmental protection is about not only this aesthetic good thing, but that it's also very important to keeping their own book of business and their own property and their, and their own concerns and needs and operations clean and viable and profitable. And so you see people who otherwise, meh, they wouldn't have cared one, one way or the other. And they were very, very irritated that the state was coming and pushing them around. And now it's part of their regular business plan and operations and they seek to do the right thing and they consult with the state. Is that in, in Northern Virginia, the population of Northern Virginia in the last 25 years has increased by more than a million people. And accompanying that growth has been an enormous amount of construction, construction of new homes, new roads, commercial properties, schools, and an enormous increase in, in vehicles. Uh, and demand for electricity, demand for water supply, the demand for sewage collection and treatment. And uh, what's been most impressive, most noteworthy, is that during that same 25 years, with that growth, we have very real, true, measured improvements in air quality, uh, improvements in water quality, improvements in the way that we uh, manage our vehicles, the way we manage our, our waste, our petroleum products. And, uh, uh, and uh, stormwater and uh, the protection of streams and wetlands, these things are all very real, have, have improved. And large numbers of releases, and they were, they were large scale releases because tanks before then had not been adequately monitored. And uh, so uh, through the years we've seen uh, the severity of releases, I think, decrease. I think the most interesting improvement really isn't in context of how many gallons or how many pounds or you know, how many nutrients. I think we always measure things in environmental or in an environmental arena we always measure things in you know how much we've reduced in the concept of pollution. But to me really the thing that's changed the most is probably how how we as leaders impacted our environmental community. And so the reductions we've seen in pollution go along with or correlate to our advancements in how we function as an agency. So if we take our historic approach of State Water Control Board, um, land, water, air, those individual boards, we came together and created DEQ. We were able to first create a vision and a mission. We then moved into values and the creation of the seven C's, strategic planning, and finding ways to move forward um, to promote sustainability of environmental program in the community, not just to implement regulations. You know, I think the um, when I first started, I think one of the biggest problems with the agency was our, the way we were confrontational with uh, permittees, with the public. Um, I think the seven C's that were established weren't just a uh, poster on the wall. I think the agency took a, a major step in, in trying to be more consistent uh, in how we apply environmental regulations, trying to be uh, more commitment to each other and to the environment and to the uh, uh, citizens as well. I think now we have much more of a culture of working with people to fix environmental problems rather than being in a confrontational relationship with people. Um, I think that's been a very positive thing for the agency to, to make that shift. I, th I think we've, management has made a real commitment to changing the, the culture of the, the agency. It used to be um, 20 years ago or so where you got a lot of points and good grades for counting beans. I think as an agency, we've been evolving the way we do business from um, 
with our more holistic approaches, risk-based strategies, watershed approaches, more innovative thinking, um, and we are really, through our outcome-oriented thinking, we are examining the why, why are we doing what we're doing, and then searching for the how. In, in the past, when we take a look at a facility, we tend to uh, look at what's going on at the facility kind of with a, a very narrow focus about uh, what our program interests are. But being co-located and being one agency allows us to work across program lines um, and uh, look and see how our programs overlap um, and better coordinate and have a better single response from the agency than individual responses that sometimes might be conflicting um, and might uh, not result in the best outcome. We hire the right people, we get the right people in the right jobs, and we get things done efficiently, effectively, and in a way that makes sure that everything is protected. Well, the staff is, is the most important part of our agency. Who we are is our staff, and, um, and that's the importance of, the, um, of our values, too. The staff reflect our values to the world, and they carry out the responsibilities of our uh, meeting our mission. Um, we're, we're nothing without um, the work that the staff does. It's it's essentially who we are, and and the success that we have a, as an agency isn't uh, nearly as dependent on the leadership as it is on um, the work that the staff does every day and the way that they relate to the public.